It's me, the legal science guy. For this week's lessons, we're going all the way to space. Oh! Hello again, everybody. I am Mr. B, and this is... Little Fast Guy! And for this week's lessons, we are going into space. Uh, we are, today, we're going to learn about our seasons. We are going to learn about the scale of our solar system. And we are going to learn about Earth's rotation and revolution, basically what gives us night and day and our years. So to start off with first, um, we have a little demonstration here. This is representing our sun. And we've got this in our backyard here. And we're gonna put everything, all of our, uh, we're going to put our Earth into the scale that if the sun was this size, what size would the Earth be? And for this particular demonstration, it's a little hard to see, but it's this size. I'm gonna bring it up there for you. It's about that big. So if we had the sun, you wanna see it? It's that big. So you wanna hold it? Okay, so if the sun was this size and this was the center of our solar system, um, where would the Earth be? And Logan is gonna show you where that Earth would be. The Earth would be about 86 feet away from if the sun, if it were this scale. Come on back, Logan. I'm so far away. Yes, you were. <laughs> okay, but for our uh, lesson today, we're gonna use this size globe because, let me see that again, Logan. Drop it. Because this thing is going to be way too tiny to show you what's actually going on on this big planet of ours. So I'm going to stick this into my pocket. We might need it for later, but for right now we're going to hold on to it. Okay, so the first things that we want to understand are what is our night and day and what is a year? So Logan had asked me um, a little while ago, he said, where does the sun go when it goes to, uh, when it turns to nighttime? Um, and what he is asking about is when we have sunrises and sunsets, what is actually happening? And more importantly, what is happening actually, here? Actually, I know where the sun goes now because you're show, you showing me at the beach. Where does the sun go? In the water. Doesn't go in the water. The river. Doesn't go in the river. Goes into space. It is in space, that's right. But what is actually happening is the sun's not really moving, it's not disappearing, it's not going somewhere else. More importantly, what we are doing is our position is moving. So when we look up at the sky and we see the sun, we are, we're seeing it from our point of view. So when we see it disappear on the horizon or rise up in the morning, what we're seeing is just our position on Earth is changing. So our Earth will be spinning and we, this is what we call our rotation. So as we are seated here, for example, um, we're over here in North America. If we were pointed here, we would be seeing daylight hours. But as we rotate, we are going to see less and less of that sun until eventually our position on the earth is going to be away from the sun and once we've turned all the way away now we've turned into nighttime and now we have darkness for about uh, 12 hours if we we're at the equator um, and then as it comes back around then our point of view is back in line with the sun and then we can see the sun again and we have sunrise and then we'll have our 12 hours of sun depending on where we are on the earth because sun day Daylight hours are different depending on where you are on the earth. Some places have less, some places have more. 
All right, so how long is one rotation on Earth? Um, most of us are probably familiar with that we have 24 hours in a day. That is going to be our rotation time. So it's gonna be 24 hours from this point back to this point again. So one full motion of the Earth around on its axis is going to be one day or one rotation of the Earth. Now, how do we get one year? So when we talk about revolution, revolution is going to be our term that we're using to describe a year or to go around in an orbit around another object. The object that we are going to be talking about typically is, Logan, <laughs> the object that we're going to be talking about um, with this topic is going to be the sun. So our orbit of the earth around the sun. So what Logan is going to demonstrate is a year on earth. All right, so for this demonstration, it's gonna be January 1st. Logan is gonna show you what one year is like on Earth. And we're back to December 31st. All right, so a couple of things that Logan did not demonstrate in that uh, demonstration was going to be the rotation of the Earth for one. So the Earth is going to rotate while it is in orbit around the sun. So it'd be kind of something like this, around the sun. So we would have a rotation of the Earth on its axis. Now that's another important part is the axis. So what is an axis? So if we look at the Earth, we may think it is just like this, but in reality, it is more on an angle like this. So as it spins, it's going to spin like this on its axis. This is super important to remember. We're looking at an angle of about 23 and a half degrees, and depending on the time period on Earth is going to determine what, how much sunlight we are getting because the amount of sunlight we're getting is going to determine the season that we're in and how long or short our days are. So as this goes around, it's going to be on its axis and that axis stays the same as it goes around the Earth. We're going to demonstrate this um, in a little bit more detail with another clip. So to recap here with our rotation and revolution, rotation is just spinning on the axis, that's all. Revolution is actually going around another object, in this case the sun. So one orbit would be one revolution or one Earth year. Now depending on what planet you're on, that's going to change. So Mars year is going to be longer uh, because it has a longer time to go around the sun than Earth's year. Venus is going to have a shorter year than the Earth as it takes long or takes shorter amount of time to get around the sun than the Earth does. All right, so when we're talking about the seasons, the common misconception is that we're actually closer to the Earth when it's hotter. Um, so that would mean that we're closer to the Earth during the summer months, but this is not a true fact. Um, and what we have to understand is that there are more than just us in the world. So what we have to understand is that by when we are in uh, summer, these guys down here are all in winter. So we have to look from a more global perspective here rather than um, just our own local mindset. So, and we also have data on this that shows that says this is uh, false as well that we're actually closer when it's in the summer months because in january when we're like this we're actually closer to the sun than we'll ever be And if we come over to our summer months, um, when we would be facing the sun a little bit more and it's going to be hotter, we're actually farther away from the sun. So in July, uh, we're actually at the farthest point away that we're going to be. In January, we are at the closest point that we are going to be 
um, for, uh, during our revolution around the sun. So proximity or closeness to the sun has really nothing to do with why we have seasons and why it gets warmer in the summer and colder in the winter. So the reason for our seasons all has to do with the axis of the earth. So what Logan is showing you here is that we should be able to see that South America and the Southern hemisphere is pointed more towards the sun. Yeah. So what we have to understand is that the proximity of the earth to the sun doesn't really have anything to do with our seasons. It's more of the tilt of the earth on its axis. So what Logan is showing you here is that South America and the Southern Hemisphere is actually going to be pointed more towards the sun, whereas we up here are going to be more pointed away from the sun. So what that means is that we are still, and I'm going to ask you to hold that tight, Logan, okay? Um, is that we are still getting sunlight. But, and this kind of gives us a good idea, is that we should be able to see this is very bright right here which means that the Southern Hemisphere in this point of the year is going to get an intense amount of sunlight. We up here are still getting daylight, but our daylight is, our sunlight is gonna be more indirect sunlight. It's scattered over a longer area and we are not getting as much heat because of this. So this would be our winter in this case is how Logan is holding this. Um, we're gonna have shorter daylight hours we're not gonna get as much intense heat, so our temperatures are gonna go down in this hemisphere. Whereas down here, this is gonna be the summer months and they're going to have more daylight hours and their temperatures are going to go up. Now let's see what happens as we rotate or revolve around the sun. So we're gonna keep our axis the same. And I'm gonna turn our overall light up here a little bit. Okay, so Logan is going to keep his earth the same tilt. Then he's going to go here. So tilt remains the same. Um, and I'm going to rotate our earth so we can see our land masses here. Okay, so our, our axis is still the same. So that axis does not change as we revolve around the sun. Um, but what's going to happen here, this would be like springtime for us. So this is about the time of year that we're in right now. So neither the, the southern or the northern hemisphere is getting more light. So we're what we would call an uh, equinox. So in March, we had an equinox, the spring equinox. And what the equinox means is that we are basically getting 12 hours of daylight, 12 hours of, of darkness. So we're getting an equal amount of daylight and darkness on the spring equinox. Um, and this would also happen on the fall equinox as well. Um, as we rotate the earth, keeping that same axis, um, what we're going to see is that neither the, the southern or the northern hemisphere is going to experience any more daylight than the other. So that we're getting an equal amount of daylight, basically on every um, equal amount of um, direction towards the sun um, throughout all, both of the hemispheres. Now let's see what happens as we continue to rotate. Now Logan is what would be classified as the summer months for the Northern Hemisphere. What I want you to pay attention to is now we see that we've got a bright amount of light hitting the Northern Hemisphere, whereas now the Southern Hemisphere is experiencing less daylight hours. They're not getting that direct sunlight anymore, so they, these guys would end up going into the more of the winter months. We up here in the North would be experiencing the summer months as we're getting more direct sunlight. And what this is also gonna do for us is this is why our days are getting longer. So we can notice now that the, day, the sunset is um, past eight o'clock in the evening, um, whereas in the winter, we were getting dark near five o'clock in the, in the evening. So we're getting more daylight hours and this is gonna continue until we hit the summer solstice. And the summer solstice is little known fact, typically on my wife's birthday. Uh, but except for this year, because we're in a leap year, it's happening on June 20th. So most of the time it is always on June 21st. What this means is that on June 21st, we have hit the summer solstice. We will have the most daylight hours uh, that we are going to experience throughout the rest of the year. So this is our longest day. So my wife gets a kind of a lucky birthday because her birthday is the longest birthday 
longest birthday of the year. Um, but she's just getting more daylight hours than anything. Um, so our solstices, um, what that is basically going to mean is the longest um, day or in this case of the winter solstice would be the shortest day of the year for us. Um, but for our uh, neighbors down south, the winter solstice is going to be their longest day of the year and the summer solstice is going to be their shortest day of the year. All right, Logan's going to move to the other side now to show us our fall equinox. All right, so now Logan is gonna be showing us the fall equinox. And this is just basically the same as the spring equinox. It's just that now it's coming after um, our summer solstice. So once again, neither side is getting um, any more daylight than the other. We are equal, and this is going to be the start of our fall season. So we're hitting autumn here. Um, this would be our autumnal equinox. And then Logan makes his revolution back, um, making one full revolution around the sun. And now what we should be able to see is that his southern hemisphere, like in Australia, is getting more direct sunlight. And we up here are getting less direct sunlight. So now we've had our winter solstice. This is gonna be our shortest day of the year. This is typically going to be December 20th, um, give or take a day, depending on the leap year or not. Um, and this is gonna be our shortest day, but for our friends down in Australia, this is gonna be their longest day of the year because they're in the Southern Hemisphere. So in the end, what our seasons are all determined by is this axis. If our axis was straight up and down, we would not have the seasons like we know them today. Um, so this 23 and a half degree angle is everything about our seasons. This is what determines our seasons. The rotation of the earth on a 24 day, 24 hour cycle helps with this as well because some planets, they rotate very slowly. So we can understand if we were not rotating as fast as what we are, we would have areas that were very, very cold because in the nighttime hours, we're not getting any solar radiation. So our temperatures would drop. So this 24 hour rotation is crucial along with our time around the sun. So that 365 day um, and a quarter um, revolution around the sun also keeps our climate where it's at. So there's a couple different things that I want us to get out of this. Rotation, 24 hours. Revolution around the sun, 365 days and a quarter. And our 23 and a half degree tilt are what is what is going to explain our seasons. All right, so one thing that we wanted to discuss as well, we kind of briefly touched on it, is the amount of daylight hours that you're gonna see throughout the revolution around the sun. So as we can see down here, these guys down here is gonna be their summer. And Logan, I'm gonna spin it okay. so you can let go. Um, they're gonna have more direct sunlight hours during their summer months. Us up here, on the other hand, are gonna have less direct sunlight. So this is why during the winter months, our daylight hours actually decreases um, the amount of time that we have in the sunlight. Um, now, what I would like you to kind of point out is these extremes, it gets ex more extreme as you go towards the pole. So at this particular point in time, the South Pole is getting 24 hours of daylight, and this is gonna continue for weeks and months where they're gonna have no uh, actual sunset. It's gonna be completely bright. Um, for every single day. There will be no darkness. But the other extreme is gonna happen over on the North Pole, where they're gonna have ex be experiencing darkness for months at a time as well, uh, because they are pointed away, and at no point in this rotation will they be getting any sunlight um, until they start to get closer to the summer solstice. Um, and then once again, that, uh, that extreme will be on the South Pole, as they will be experiencing um, the darkness and the North Pole will be experiencing no sunsets. They will just continue to have sunlight every day for months on end. Today we learned about what makes day tonight. We learned about the Earth moves in space. And we learned about what makes our seasons. Tune in tomorrow for a lesson on the moon. To Mr. B in a little side sky.
We'll see you tomorrow. Peace out.